inviting me to share about our family, about Brandon, and, um, and our lives. I first met Woody and his grandson, Brent Casey, at an Honor and Remember banquet in Virginia. And they were telling me, about, telling me about this amazing and beautiful project. And they said, well, are you headed back to Kentucky after the banquet? And I said, absolutely. Well, you know, we've got one installed in West Virginia. You're going to pass right by it. So I did. I stopped and passed, and it was beautiful. When I first saw it, I was taken aback by its sheer beauty. I'm kind of glad it's covered today. I, I didn't realize it would be covered. Well, I guess I should have known that. But. Um, Tommy and I took a picture of ourselves beside the monument. Actually, we took a picture of the monument, and then when we looked really a little closer, because of the black stone that it's made from, our reflection was in that. It took my breath away because it showed me in a tangible way how much our family has changed, and we are that Gold Star family. I grew up in Ashland and graduated from Paul Blazer High School and several, well, just a couple years ago, right? I have a couple of friends here, Terry Stambo and Shannon, I mean, Frank Keys. You guys are here today. Thank you for being here today. Of course, I know it's part of your, but, but your, your task, but I really appreciate you being here and supporting me and this project. I also have several of my family members here. My brother and my sister are here. My sister-in-law, Kathy, and her girls. One of my best childhood friends of all time. She helped me actually take care of Brandon when he was little. Lisa and her daughters are here. And my cousin Christy and her husband Joe. Thank you so much for being here today. And I also want to recognize Sarah Taylor. who uh, We've become great friends since the loss of our son. She lives just down the road from me in western Kentucky. Now just a little bit of history about our family. My husband Tommy and I were married in Catlicksburg, Kentucky. And we have three kids. Our oldest son, Sean, is a sergeant in the U.S. Army, stationed at Fort Sam Houston with his wife, Ashley, and our grandson, Fox. Our middle son, Brandon, was stationed at Fort Wainwright, Alaska. And our daughter, Bethany, well, of course, with all this Army, she married a soldier, too, and they're stationed at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. The Army is a family affair in that my husband, his father, and his brother were all Army. Well, our, we're all Army, but my dad was Air Force, and we don't talk about that. <laughs> Even though our family has lost so much, we are so thankful and blessed for the years we had with our son Brandon. Brandon was born here in Ashland and spent nearly half of his life here. When he was about eight, we were transferred to Western Kentucky, so we still call this home. In fact, he was in third grade in Miss Barber's class at Crab Elementary, so that's, that's the year that we left. Brandon did what most kids love to do. He loved to skate. He loved to play baseball, and he loved to play football. In fact, he was part of the greatest football championship of all time, uh, the Boyd County Ashland City Championship. They won, and I think Coach Marty Goot is here today. Thank you, Marty Goot. We are so happy that you coached him when he was like eight years old. Still better than the Super Bowl. It was just awesome. Um, he loved to fish, he loved to hike, and we even camped a lot. At, in fact, we couldn't afford Disney. We never went to Disney. All we could afford was Greenbow Lake, and that is amazing for us. So we love Greenbow Lake. Well, Brandon also, for those of you who know him, got into his fair share of trouble. Well, more than his fair share, and that's a really long story, but we'll tell that another day. But I will share with you this. When he was about five or six, King's Daughters, the hospital there in Ashland, was undergoing some construction, and the city had repaved some of the sidewalks. Well, we lived just three blocks from the park, and we would walk back and forth a lot. And one day, we walked back, and there were stanchions there blocking off the sidewalk because it had just been repaved. Well, I couldn't help but notice as we stepped aside, there in huge letters was Brandon Mullins with a lightning bolt S just like his signature and he totally denied that all of his life until he graduated high school and he finally admitted it but he just laughed so uh, that signature is actually still there today it's on Bath Avenue just a block from the park um, at parking letter G if you all happen to be down there and you want to kind of see it it's faded um, and every time I come to Ashland in fact we just stopped there this morning um, I trace those letters it wasn't funny then but it's kind of cool now that I can share that story with you and give you a glimpse into who he was Brandon truly was here that's all he was saying he wasn't doing anything illegal like defacing public property or anything like that he was just letting the world know hey I'm here and he did he left his mark on everyone he touched and especially that sidewalk 
Well, about more about Brandon. He was the life of the party and always made people smile, all except for the bullies or people who made him mad. He was athletic and very, very strong, and he could put a hurt on somebody if they made him mad if he, if, if, uh, or if you hurt anybody that he loved. His battle buddies have shared story after story about Brandon and how he made them laugh and how their time in Afghanistan was better. He had a goofy, infectious laugh just to be around him. They were happy he was there. He was fearless and lived his entire life with passion, adventure, and love. Brandon was just 21 and had been in service just under two years when he was killed in Afghanistan. The vehicle he was driving was attacked by an IED. Brandon was the only casualty from that incident. This year on August 25th will be Brandon's fifth angel anniversary. How can that be? Well, my husband wrote a song about Brandon and it's called 21. And we actually put together a YouTube video if you'd ever maybe want to see that. And, but the song is based on a voicemail that he left me because just before he deployed, I left him a message and said, hey, Brandon, can you call me? And I'm not going to answer the phone. Just, just leave me a message and that way I can hear your voice anytime I want. And he did. And in that voicemail, he says, this has got a little business to take care of. It's no big deal. I'm going to go handle it and come back. Don't worry, Mom. I'm going to make it back. I love you and I love all you guys. But Brandon did make it back and we're so very, very thankful. Very, very thankful. Although Brandon is no longer in this world, I know in my heart he is still with him. He's still with me and he's with all of us. I believe that God can take the darkest of days and turn them into good if you'll let him. So many amazing things have happened to our family since he was, he's been gone. Things like a free trip to Alaska on my husband and I's 25th wedding anniversary. It just so happened to be the same day as his brigade to return from theater ceremonies in Alaska. So all of the wounded warriors and the Gold Star families were invited back to be part of that. Although incredibly sad, it was so awesome to meet in person his squad and his battle buddies and to share his stories and laugh and cry together. Another really cool thing that we did just last year was we got to um, jump with the Army Golden Knights in North Carolina. Two miles up, 120 miles an hour, free falling. We did this along with 30 other Gold Star families in honor of our soldiers. How cool is that? It's a totally awesome experience that I totally would do again in a heartbeat. And I got to say thanks, Brandon. Even my daughter and her husband have gotten in on some of the action from Brandon. He, they've gotten free tickets to the Titans and the Predators. That's like perfect for them. It's like Brandon is saying, hey, can you, here's a free game for you. But the greatest thing that we think has happened happened to our older son, Sean, because he and his wife, Ashley, had been together five years and believed medically they could not have children. We welcomed our grandson, Fox Brandon Mullins, into this world just a little after a year since Brandon was gone. So miracles still happen. Where there is death, there is new life. And for this, we're so grateful. And the Bible teaches us that a seed has to die to bring life. And that's our faith. Well, since Brandon's death, I've also found great comfort, friendship, and purpose through a special organization of women called the American Gold Star Mothers, whose motto is turning sorrow into service. And the last two years, our Kentucky department has become has been a partner for a Veterans Day 5K and we use proceeds from this race to purchase 1,000 Welcome Home Vietnam Challenge coins. And we have some of those coins with us today. If there are any Vietnam era veterans with us, we would love to present you with that coin. Even if you were not in theater in Vietnam, if you were on call during that time, you are a Vietnam era veteran. And we say thank you for your service and welcome home. That's been such an amazing part because I can't give Brandon a hug, but I can sure give you one. <laughs> Well, Brandon also lives through a foundation that we just started this year called the Brandon Scott Mullins Memorial Foundation. And we're continuing some scholarships. It's a 501c3, two scholarships, one at his high school, one at the ICE Foundation. He was an outstanding hockey player. And we also raise money to give to other veteran support organizations such as the Warrior 180 Foundation. It's a newly formed project. Um, a gentleman we know, he's a chaplain. He was a chaplain in the Army. He was in Iraq. His son was in Iraq, and they both have PTSD. He's a, he's a, a pastor as well. Um, he does frontline intervention for those suffering from 
PTSD. So the Warrior 180 Foundation. We also support the Bluegrass Chapter of the Honor Flight. We've given them over $5,000 through our Gold Star Mothers to uh, fund those flights to Washington, D.C. In fact, I was, a part, I was a guardian last year and got to go, and this year Sarah's going to go with some, some veterans. So, so we're still taking care of our boys, right? We are. And another, another one I want to mention is the Tri-State Honor Dogs, and I believe, Brent Casey, you're involved with another um, service dog organization. So there's so many things of it out there that, that, that we, we jump on, so it's, it's, that gives us purpose. Well, our signature project, though, I just got to mention, is the Kentucky Remembers. It's a weekend before Veterans Day. In Owensboro, we have the 5K that I mentioned. Then that afternoon is the City Parade, the Veterans Day Parade, which is the longest-running city parade in the country, by the way, in Owensboro, Kentucky. I didn't know if you knew that. It's, that's our claim to fame. Um, and then that evening, we're having a dinner concert at our River Park Center, and we've got A-list guests and speakers. So um, I have some cards for that, too, if you, if that you might be interested in, in coming to Ken Owensboro for Veterans Day weekend. Well, like many of our heroes here today, Brandon was just a boy. My Brandon was just a boy when he left for the Army. He probably were too. He was doing what he loved to do. He loved to work out. He loved to run and lift weights right up his alley. He did all of that in the Army. He loved hanging out with his friends and being in the outdoors. And he, he, he loved guns. I just got to tell you, he did love guns. So. And we spoke just a couple of weeks. I remember this this uh, this message so vividly. We spoke just a couple of weeks before he was killed, and I was just making conversation. What do you do over there, Brandon? What's your day like? Because you know he's in Afghanistan. I'm like, what do you do over there? You know? He said, I "said Mom." Well, I actually said, "Mom, if you know what I was doing, you wouldn't want me to be here. You'd worry." But I'm here with my boys. My boys need me, and when it's time, I'm going to reenlist. I'm so very sad that my little man is gone and I would trade my life. But I'm so proud of the servant and soldier he became. Thank you, Woody, and everyone involved with this project from the bottom of our hearts for honoring and remembering and for your commitment to teaching future generations because this will last forever as long as this great country does. As a beautiful tribute to what it means to be a Gold Star family and to honor our sons and daughters for their service and sacrifice. And as I close, I would like to sing a prayer with you today. Irving Berlin wrote the first draft of this in 1918 while he was in the Army, uh, stationed in New York. He never finished it, putting it on a shelf for two decades. And it was first heard when Kate Smith sang it on, during a live broadcast on the 21st anniversary of Armistice Day, which is the anniversary of the end of World War I. The significance of her singing it that day, the, the country was at, a, at a, such an ease, and what do you may remember because of the impending World War II. So, sing along, and may God bless our troops, and may God bless America. While the storm clouds gather, Why do we